Hey everyone, and welcome to this special episode of the Five Bytes Podcast. As is usually the case for the new year, this episode is going to focus on a recap of some of the biggest news stories covered in 2022, and also highlight some of the best scripts, tricks, and tips for the year too. And just so you know, this podcast was actually first recorded in early January 2018, so this episode also marks the five-year anniversary of the podcast. And I wanted to share some numbers for those who maybe listen every week. I thought you might be interested to maybe hear a little bit about the health or the growth of the podcast in that time. Um, so in that time, the number of plays annually grew from around 12,000 plays in its first year to over 27,000 plays this year, with over 130,000 plays in its five-year run. I would just like to say thank you to everyone who has ever listened to the show and of course to all the great companies who have sponsored the show in that time. Each episode takes several hours to put together and it would not be possible without sponsors. And the sponsors for this week's episode are Netrix Policy Pack, Control Up, and Numescent. And as always, if you enjoy the show, you have these awesome sponsors to thank. Now let's get into a recap of some of the news. It was a pretty strange year in our industry with some major acquisitions, including the acquisition of Citrix by Tipco and an attempted acquisition of VMware by Broadcom. Now in episode 261, which is obviously very recent, I shared the latest update on the VMware acquisition and that there is delays due to an investigation by the European Commission into the acquisition for possibly having some anti-competition concerns. Unfortunately, there is a human cost for employees with these types of acquisitions, and Citrix laid off many employees before and after the acquisition was completed. And another major acquisition this year was Oracle's acquisition of Cerner, which is a world-leading electronic health record system. There were other very high-profile less maybe enterprise IT related acquisitions this year as well, such as the Twitter acquisition and an attempted acquisition of Activision by Microsoft, which as of the end of 2022 is also seeing some delays and difficulties and challenges and maybe it won't come to pass. I guess we'll find out in 2023. And as things stand, many of the largest economies in the world right now have entered a recession and many tech companies have been undergoing what some have been calling a right sizing exercise by laying off thousands of employees. As we enter 2023, it is certainly very uncertain times. There are still many companies with vacancies to fill and a lot of countries are at close to full employment. But inflation, along with continued supply chain issues, are having a crippling effect on a lot of companies. And people like Mark Zuckerberg, who is at the helm of Meta, which has had massive layoffs, have stated that they hired too many people to deal with growth um, during the beginning of the pandemic. And then they found themselves basically too bloated and had to let people go uh, as a result. So it's kind of this strange time where we're kind of at full employment, but just all the other factors are causing this ripple effect and layoffs are starting to become more frequent and a lot of economies are entering recessions. And speaking of supply chain issues, earlier this year, I covered stories from tech vendor CEOs in the hardware space who were predicting a return to normal by the third quarter of 2022 for their businesses. Unfortunately, this did not pan out as China has continued to operate rolling COVID lockdowns and China being the major manufacturing hub of the world, this has continued to be a choke point for businesses to operate all around the world, unfortunately. 2022 also continued the trend of major security incidents, including breaches of LastPass, the popular password manager tool, uh, where data backups were taken by a hacker that included sensitive user information, but at least not their password vaults. Okta also disclosed a security incident, which was originally reported to be limited, but more recently was reported to state that the hacker gained source code to one of the products, Uh, but Okta then came out to say that they have followed security protocols and they operate in a zero trust manner, so hackers gaining source code should not necessarily expose customers. 
Microsoft themselves also experienced a major data breach too, with thousands of records taken. And Microsoft was also notified this year of hackers using legitimate Microsoft signed drivers as part of their attack efforts. And ransomware also continued to be a major menace with businesses in all industries affected, including a hospital system in France whose operations were badly impacted by an attack. My own local university was hit with ransomware this year. KP Snacks, which makes one of my favorite crisps, the McCoy Salt and Vinegar Crisps, was hit. And as a result, stock of the crisps that I like was affected. They weren't to be found in shops for a while there. Uh, Manchester United Football Club was hit by ransomware, and more recently, the Guardian newspaper was also hit. It was reported that $1.2 billion was paid out to ransomware gangs in 2021, and it will be interesting to see what that number stands at for 2022. Log4 Shell also had many vendors scrambling to patch their own products that embedded the product for their logging purposes. Now, luckily, it turned out that attacks using the log4 shell vulnerability were not as prominent as people have predicted, possibly because vendors were so um, active in patching their products, but maybe also because it was somewhat difficult to actually infiltrate using the vulnerability. Windows 11 had somewhat of a rocky year. Take up for the operating system has been slow, and this wasn't helped with the release of 22H2, which was plagued with many different issues, including issues with RDP connections dropping, incompatibility issues with some hardware, and more. Now luckily, as of this recording, it appears the 22H2 release is now pretty stable, and I'm personally hoping to migrate to it myself over the holidays. It wasn't a great year for Windows updates, and if you listen to the podcast, you'll already know why, uh, because it seems like every month this year, updates broke something in a pretty major way. Perhaps the most major of all being the Kerberos authentication issues that were caused just last month by patches to domain controllers, and it took a lot of scrambling from Microsoft and also administrators uh, to eradicate those issues in environments and to get a proper patch out. For much of the year, it seemed some media outlets and some companies in the finance industry in particular were determined to push a narrative about a need for employees to return to the office, with many articles about high burnout rates for those working from home, difficulty communicating when remote, and a loss in productivity. But this was contradicted by other studies that showed productivity actually increased when people were working from home. And those employees who are working from home seem pretty determined overall to make sure that they continue to be able to work from home too. For now, it seems the majority who were sent to work from home in 2020 are at least continuing to work from home part of the time in a kind of blended hybrid approach. So let's see how this goes in 2023. And as always, I kind of want to highlight some of the news for the sponsors of the show from last year. And that includes show sponsor Control Up, who had another great year as their DEX offering keeps expanding with script based actions making their way into Solve, which is the web UI real time dashboard. And they also expanded the features and capabilities of Edge DX, brought unified communications monitoring, uh, user sentiment, and more. And Netrix Policy Pack continued to grow its rich feature set, particularly on the security side of things, with Least Privilege Manager receiving several significant enhancements. There was the Policy Pack Mac integration this year, and much more. It seems like Policy Pack has been integrated very well within the Netrix product suite and family. And Numescent launched CloudPager, which is the first cloud native container management platform for Windows desktops that allows you to take your existing AppV and MSIX packages along with your cloud paging containers, which is a best in class container format with an unparalleled high level of compatibility for applications and just simply drag and drop those packages into the nice admin portal for CloudPager and assign to groups of users in Azure Active Directory groups via work pods to auto deploy the applications quickly and easily to any Windows desktops anywhere with an added ability to also rapidly roll back any changes if needed. Overall, a really great way to modernize your application management approach. 
But now let's check out some of the 2022 best of for scripts, tricks, and tips. I featured a lot of great scripts, tricks, and tips this year. And when picking just some of them to highlight, I try to put some of my own personal interests aside. I featured a lot of RPA related tips as an example, but I realized this may not interest everyone. So I went for what I feel might appeal to a wider audience. So first up, I could just have said that there's a tip to follow Jen Gentleman on uh, Twitter. And uh, Jen works for Microsoft and she's just great on all social media platforms at constantly providing really great tips. And just some of the tips that she shared this year include uh, using the Control Shift C keyboard shortcut in Windows 11 for copy as path, uh, using a grid view for the clock in Windows to get a world clock, or alternatively also being able to set alternative clocks. So if you're working with teams across various different time zones, this could be really amazing for you uh, to very quickly see, oh, okay, this is what time it is where this person's working. Uh, maybe I'll hold off on sending them this message on Teams or Slack or whatever. Uh, another tip was to use Power Toys to batch rename files. And a couple of other keyboard shortcuts. If you use Control, Shift, and T, you're able to reopen a tab in Edge if you accidentally closed one. And finally, uh, use Win, Shift, and Left and Right to move a window between monitors. But yeah, like I said, if you just want to follow Jen on Twitter, that's at Jen MSFT. Another cool tip that was shared this year, a dark coder on GitHub shared a power run as system PowerShell module created uh, for executing applications and processes in Windows in the system context without a need for any other tools such as PS exec. Hacking Articles shared a really nice looking and simple infographic this year for authentication security. A really nice one to maybe print out and stick up on your hopefully home cubicle wall or just the wall in your office just for a referral or also maybe share it with your team. It's a pretty good one. And also kind of in the security realm, I think the next few tips I picked were from a security perspective. Uh, but Pingcastle have a really cool tool for performing quick Active Directory security audits. And if you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, there is a YouTube edition that you can check out. You'll find it at 5bytespodcast.com. Uh, but the on the YouTube edition, you'll be able to see an example of what the report generated for the Active Directory security audit looks like. It's pretty impressive looking. This year, there was also a tip to check out an Azure AD assessment script. Uh, which is on GitHub, and I'll share a link to that with this episode, which is episode 263, and you'll find that at 5 and you'll find a link to absolutely everything I reference on every episode of the podcast over at 5 uh, But another really great security tip, and one I've repeated on several episodes this year, is to join the patching mail group. So there's a Google mail group uh, that's completely dedicated to patching, so a lot of the stories that I'll cover on uh, the show, I'll initially see the reports coming through that mail group, and then I'll typically kind of wait until some of the other media outlets start to report it and maybe get some confirmation from Microsoft. But uh, this is a really great first port of call. And if you're an IT administrator who does patching, you should really be in this group um, to get information as quickly as possible about, about patches when they go wrong. Also security related, Sophos had a great post this year on reconstructing PowerShell scripts from multiple Windows event logs. So if an attacker uses a PowerShell script, you're actually able to piece that script back together via the Windows event logs. And Trevor Jones this year shared a script to get the current Windows 10 patch level using PowerShell. And not security related for this one, uh, but kind of from a personal standpoint, I had a really great time presenting at HIMSS, which is a uh, medical conference in Orlando, Florida, uh, with my good friend Trenton Tai during the year. And after the conference, we published a blog post on controlup.com using actual real world data showing remote access tool utilization in different countries and how that may correlate with public health policies during the peak of the pandemic. So really, really interesting to see that data and to kind of compare it 
uh, country to country. Like for example, Australia had a pretty kind of rigid isolation policy uh, and they kept things open. And you can kind of see that uh, most people didn't get forced to work remotely. So remote access kind of happened um, later uh, in the flow for them versus maybe someone like Ireland where I am, where uh, things hit very early on and you can kind of see that in how people were working. And I couldn't have a best of without mentioning some of Guy Leach's tips. And Guy this year shared a commandlet to find all Azure related uh, modules and install them. Guy also shared a script for trimming working memory sets, which is a really interesting one, particularly if you're on uh, maybe published desktops, terminal services for published applications as well. If you want to free up some memory from maybe idle sessions or something like that, you can clear a lot of memory by running this script. Also PowerShell related, but Brian Posse had shared a, a blog on how to create functions in PowerShell scripts. So, so kind of going back to basics, but also very important. The awesome Morris Daily shared his resources this year on application reliability monitor with log analytics. And some of the work that Morris has done with log analytics is very, very impressive. So if that's something you're interested in, check out this blog. Thomas Thornton had a post on writing reusable Terraform modules and Terraform has been very, very popular in the recent years and kind of maybe also related, but not directly. Uh, Sid Palace had a really great Terraform course that he created and shared and it's available completely for free on YouTube. It is a complete Terraform course. So if you're interested in getting started with Terraform, definitely check that out. Uh, I completed it myself. And someone in the same vein, the awesome Jim Moyle had a series of YouTube videos from a couple years ago, but I shared them again on the podcast this year uh, where he's going through Azure Image Builder. I think he goes through ARM templates and several different automation uh, techniques for Azure Virtual Desktop and really just virtual machines in Azure in general. And the awesome James Kinden had a blog post this year on shrinking an Azure OS disk to enable ephemeral capabilities. So one of the tricks with the ephemeral OS disk is there has to be a certain size allowance, I believe, for the caching of the OS disk. So it's kind of a, a difficult one to get started with because you need to size things right. And you might think you're picking a disk that will work for it, but because there's so much disk required for the caching, it's not a good fit. And then you just have the option grayed out. So James can kind of help you through that with this blog post. And on the Windows 365 side of things, there's some Windows 365 PowerShell scripts shared this year, including a script to enable short path for cloud PCs. I also personally shared my own automated build using robotic process automation uh, that I run every month for building out a brand new fully patched Windows 365 custom image. Mike Streets took part in a webinar this year and the video recording of that is still available on YouTube where he shared his top 10 Citrix optimizations. And one I mention I think pretty much every year, but there's a really great example of a toast notification, this time to notify users when recycle bin contains more than 10 gigabytes or more. And in this particular instance, it's being executed by Intune or MECM, but it's a pretty cool script to just kind of integrate into your own processes, however you see fit. Toast notifications are awesome. And Leo Bouquet had a blog post on how to build a private WinGet repository. So if you want to use Windows Package Manager and have your own source for your packages, this is one to check out. Uh, Michael Hildebrand had a blog covering the topic of Azure Active Directory join and whether to use it or not. And kind of in that vein, Brooks Pepin had a post on 10 things to know about hybrid Azure Active Directory join with Intune. So hybrid Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory join have been big topics this year. And finally, a short one, but still a good one. Joshua Gatewood shared a PowerShell command that you can use to force Azure Active Directory dynamic groups to recalculate. Now, I'm not sure if that one's still gonna be relevant if you're using the uh, latest Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync, I think it's called. I covered it on the last episode of the podcast. Um, but hopefully so, 
If not, if you're still on Azure AD Connect, I'm sure this works. But that's it for this episode. Normal service will resume next week. Thank you all so much for listening and Happy New Year.